Local electrochemical measurements have become an invaluable tool in studying a wide variety of systems. However, the information obtained is often an indirect measure requiring some interpretation of results. Scanning droplet cell, or SDC, is a unique technique in the local electrochemistry family, which allows direct, local measurements of a sample. In this video presentation, we will introduce the SDC technique on the M470. This presentation is broken into three parts. The principles of the SDC technique will be introduced. The implementation of SDC on the M470 will be shown. And finally, example results from the SDC test sample will be shown. Let's first look at the background principles of the SDC technique. The SDC technique is illustrated. In SDC, a droplet is used as the local probe to measure the sample. A special head is used to allow this droplet of electrolyte to form with the sample. The electrochemical cell is then formed within the droplet. The sample acts as the working electrode, which has an area equal to the droplet contact. The counter and reference electrodes are then contained within the head. One of the great advantages of the SDC technique is that any electrochemical experiment available to the user, including electrochemical impedance spectroscopy, can be performed directly and locally on the sample within the confines of the droplet. While these point-by-point -point measurements can be performed, it is also possible to scan the droplet across the sample whilst applying a single bias or frequency. This forms a 2D map of a single electrochemical parameter of the sample. This is illustrated in the OCP measurement of the copper, zinc, iron, trimetallic sample shown. The ability of the SDC to perform both experiment types in both AC and DC modes is a further advantage of the technique. This makes it one of only a few methods to measure local impedance. When performing SDC measurements, researchers have two head options, which will be discussed in the following slides. These are the continuous flow head and the reservoir head. Using an SDC flow head allows the droplet to be continually refreshed throughout the experiment. To do this, the head is attached to a pump which flows electrolyte into the head past the reference and counter electrode, and then flows it out of the head. On the other hand, when an SDC reservoir head is used, all of the electrolyte for use in the experiment is held within a reservoir above the capillary opening of the head. Unlike the flow head, the droplet is not continually refreshed throughout the experiment. Because the droplet defines the size of the working electrode, it also defines the resolution of the SDC experiment. So what controls the size of the droplet? The head itself is important in determining the size of the droplet which forms. Generally, the smaller the aperture of the head opening, the smaller the droplet, and therefore the higher the resolution of the technique. The probe is not the only factor influencing the droplet. The electrolyte also matters. The electrolyte influences the surface tension of the droplet, which in turn influences its size. Finally, the sample type is important. If the sample is not easily wet by the electrolyte used, the droplet will be more easily confined, exposing a smaller area and increasing the resolution. SDC has found use in a number of different fields where the direct measurement of a local area has been key. This includes catalysis, where it has been used to screen the effect of catalyst composition on catalytic activity, Corrosion, where SDC has allowed local variations in corrosion properties across a feature to be measured. And materials, where it has allowed local doping effects to be explained. How is SDC implemented on the M470 through the SDS470 module? The components of an SDS470 system are shown. A control PC is used to run the M470 software, which interfaces with the equipment to set up and run the SDC experiment. A single channel potentiostat is required to perform the SDC measurement. Because the SDS470 can run both DC and AC SDC measurements, the potentiostat also has the ability to perform EIS measurements. 
For precise movement of the SDC head, an XYZ stage is supplied for automated movement in all directions. The control electronics ensure movement and data collection are synchronized and interfaces all components with the control PC. Finally, a sample holder, typically the tri-cell, is used to allow the sample to be mounted on the scanning stage. It is important this holder allows the sample to be leveled, removing any tilt which can be detrimental to the SDC experiment. As a key component to the SDC experiment, let's take another look at the SDC heads. The flow head supplied with the SDS-470 is shown mounted on the scan head. In this image, we see the inlet and outlet tubes mounted on the head, and the counter electrode is also shown. When using a flow head, there are two options for dealing with the electrolyte flowed through the head. In the first option, the solution is pumped into the head and returned to the same electrolyte reservoir. By flowing electrolyte from and into the same reservoir, it ensures that a minimum and predefined amount of electrolyte is used. In the second option, after the solution has flowed through the head, it is deposited into a different reservoir. This is particularly useful when a lot of product is produced during the electrochemical measurement, which could otherwise be detrimental to the measurement. The SDS-470 is also supplied with a reservoir head, which is now shown. When using the reservoir head, a wire, reference, and counter electrode are used. Because all of the electrolyte is held within the head, there is a risk that this could evaporate off during use. To avoid this, a sealing disc is used. How do the two heads supplied with the SDS-470 compare? Both heads are now made of peak for the highest chemical compatibility. The flow head has a 500 micron aperture resulting in a resolution better than one millimeter, so this is dependent on the solution and sample. On the other hand, the reservoir head has a smaller aperture of 100 microns, which improves the resolution to around 200 microns. Again, the final resolution of the technique, even with this head, is dependent on the solution and sample used. When the flow head is used, the electrolyte is continually refreshed throughout the measurement, while when using the reservoir head, the electrolyte remains unchanged during the measurement. The SDC flow head is a good choice for studies of processes producing products detrimental to the measurement of interest as well as studies where the effect of flow rate on the electrochemical process is of interest. The SDC reservoir head is of interest when the highest resolution SDC measurements are needed. When SDC measurements are performed on the SDS-470, what sort of data can be expected? In the following slides, we will show example results using the SDC flow head. We will first look at a DC-SDC measurement of the standard gold and resin sample. This is performed using tap water as the electrolyte. The sample is biased at minus 0.5 volts versus silver silver chloride. When this measurement is performed, we see a clear region of high current magnitude over the gold. Because the resin is an insulator and cannot behave as a working electrode, zero current is measured when the probe is in this region. The SDS-470 can also be used to perform AC-SDS experiments. Again, the standard golden resin sample is measured in tap water. The sample is held at OCP with a 50 millivolt AC bias and a 100 kilohertz AC frequency applied. In this case, the AC current magnitude resulting from this measurement is shown, although the impedance data is also collected. As expected, a much larger current is measured over the gold than over the resin. In this video, we introduced the SDC technique. Depending on the requirements of the experiment, SDC can be performed with a flow or reservoir type head in AC or DC mode. The SDC technique is of interest for catalysis, corrosion, materials, and more. Further information on the SDC technique and its applications can be found on our website. Please contact your local biologic representative if you have any questions or require further information about the STC technique covered in this video.